Okay, so before I dive in and start with the drums, uh, I'm going to make a master fader. Um, that way I can have a, a level that I can kind of look at. So I'm going to go create a stereo, um, master fader. Gotta be careful when you say that. Um, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure that everything has some, some good headroom because when you mix, you wind up bringing things up and up and up and up and up. Then all of a sudden you find your clipping, then you bring everything down again and some things are locked into automation. So I find it's very helpful and I've made some of my best mixes where I leave more than enough headroom there on the master track. So um, if I'm just playing the track... I can see it's peaking pretty hard there to 0.07. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this groups here on the bottom. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, turn on all the groups. And so now whatever I do is going to affect all the faders. And I'm bringing all the faders down like 6 dB. So this is minus 8.5. Let's bring it down to like minus 14 or so. Now, one thing that's dangerous about that is you also lowered your master fader, so you're bringing everything down twice. So I'm going to option click, set that back to zero, and now we'll see where my level is in the kind of middle of the song. I like that because that gives you plenty of room to work. Um, you may have to turn your headphones up a little bit because we will operate a little bit softer. But in the end, it's good to have that headroom to be able to bring things up. So first I'm going to do is uh, micro that for the time being. And I'm going to mute all the tracks. Just holding option, click M to mute them all. And just start, start sort of uh, unmuting them. So you'll see I have a kick on the outside, a kick on the inside, stair top, snare bottom. I even have... A mid side room recording that was back in my mid side phase. Um, I don't know if I want the mid side stuff in the drum room. I don't know if I want a drum room at all because there's a lot of dead stuff going on here. It might just make it a little bit cl clutter, a uh, cloudier, cluttered. So um, I'm just going to take those, I'm going to right click and select hide and make an active. So that's going to kind of get rid of those. Um, so now I have all the drums down here. It looks to be. Uh, these, so I'm going to go up to window and bring up a uh, color palette. Let's make all the drums red. This guy, so when I, when I visually see it on here, it'll be red. So uh, from here, I'm going to, you know, I have a kick outside, kick inside. So I have two kick drum mics. Let's let's hear and, and, and see if one's better than the other. That's okay. Again, that one's okay. They're both okay. Uh, rather than get too super fancy with it, one thing I might want to do is just trigger a kick. This is very, very common. So I'm going to take one, the kick inside, and just hide and make an active so that's one less track I need to see. Uh, if, I, if I'm not using it, I don't want to see it. I can hide it in case I need, need to go back to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger. There's many different programs that, that allow you to trigger sounds. One of the my personal favorites is Drumagog. So I'm just going to go plug in other, grab Drumagog, just the mono version of it. If you ever used it, it works very straightforwardly. Um, there's a lot of extra functions as well, but I'm just going to use this, just the regular triggering on it. Uh, one thing you want to do is under options, make sure that your delay compensation is on uh, because there is a specific latency, uh, precisely a 3800 uh, sample latency. So that's almost a tenth of a second. So that's no good so um i'm gonna go in there uh with the this track is the only one playing you know just loop a, tr a chunk that has kick drums on here and when i play it you don't hear anything because you have to load a gog file in there so under applications uh drummer gog 5 gog files then i can go through and you can hear here we you know audition different uh drums um I can double click on it and it loads it. You'll see it actually plays random samples if I want it to. So it never, each hit is slightly different than another. But let's just hit play and see what we have. I hear false uh, attacks there. So I'm going to bring the sensitivity up, up, sensitivity up a little bit. So it's a little less sensitive. So now. Uh, 
Sounds pretty good. Uh, the one I liked the most was uh, one of these DW kicks. So, um, yeah, I like that. Um, and if I want to hear it with a snare, I'll just unmute the snare just to, just to hear if the kick and snare have like a good interplay with each other. So that kick will be able to cut through the mix a little bit better. So let's go with that. Now, another thing that I do is back in the old days, you know, when everything was on analog, you'd wind up gating the toms. And in uh, a digital audio workstation, it's easier to just edit the toms that way. Because I mean, if you look at it, you can see you know, there's a tom hit here, but there's also a lot of crap going on. And we have a lot of tracks. The more stuff you can get rid of, the better. And it will clean up your drums significantly if you're able to uh, mute and and edit that uh, kick at, that attack at uh, the, the tom hits. In the song so what i'm going to do is you know i'll blow it up a little bit first thing i do is i'll duplicate the playlist in case i screw something up i don't have to worry about it so i'll go through and with my single key shortcuts enabled i'm just gonna hit the a key and it's gonna trim from there to the end i'm gonna solo that track and then hit it to the b key after the decay and that way, when I go to the next hit, which is probably this one, I can hit the A key. And when I do that, it's going to trim it to the previous edit. So it's going to erase from where my cursor is to where the next edit point is. So that's the A key. And, put the, and I can go all the way through. There's you know a big bridge with a lot of toms and stuff like that. Uh, so there's three different tom tracks here. Now, you can watch me edit for the next 30 minutes, but you don't want to do that. And like the cooking shows where they actually cook something and all of a sudden they get ready to throw it in the oven, you're not going to watch it in the oven. They pull one out of the oven like it's already done. I'm going to do that because I already have these tracks edited. So I'm going to go over here and pull out of the oven my edited Tom 1, edited Tom 2 track, and my edited Tom 3 track. So those are edited. Now, if, if someone's a softer player, you may want to consider doing that with the, the snare drum as well. But, you know, the snare drum here is very consistent. Uh, I, I should be able to gate that. You know, one thing you'll hear is he does play a lot of um, rolls and stuff like that. And so, you know what, you know, ghost notes in, in snare drums tend to get buried or missing. So if I gate the, the ghost notes out, with a track this dense, you're not going to notice it. I mean, if the drums were featured, that'd be a different story. So um, I'm just going to rough mix of the drums going, and then I'll do a second part of the video here. So. And you'll notice that there's no hi-hat microphone. The reason for that is because the drummer was such a loud player that there was so much hi-hat in the overheads that a uh, separate hi-hat mic would not have made any difference because you wouldn't have used it at all. So there's no hi-hat mic recorded here just because of how loud loud the drummer was. Uh, there's ride cymbal. A lot of times I'll add a second uh, separate microphone to the ride if they go to the ride cymbal a lot. And I'll mute that on and off, but I'll keep that on for the time being. Maybe just bring it down just in case. Um, and let's hear what we have. Okay, so after this, let's jump in and do some processing, uh, EQ, add some reverb, and uh, see where we are from there. <laughs> 